how much competition is there going to be just right off the bat? Um, man, it's going to be great competition. You know, obviously the four guys, you know, X, um, Murphy, Masco, KJ, and then you got, you know, Greg and, and Kevin. So, um, that competition, man, that's what you want, you know, to be honest with you. I think it brings the best out of all the guys and, and just, you know, keep guys from being complacent, thinking they got a position. Um, and so, that's the thought process moving forward. Like, well, you got to earn the right to run out on the field. And I'm, I'm constantly telling my guys to push the guys in front of me all right, and embrace the competition. And uh, so I'm looking forward. For Xavier to come back for another year, what did that kind of mean for you? And what are you excited about yeah, um, so, to get him for one more? Yeah, I mean, you know, anytime you get a chance to get Xavier Thomas back, you know, that's a big deal. And uh, when he, he said he was coming back, man, I was fired up. Uh, obviously, a guy with that kind of experience, um, athleticism, you know, I think he's eager to prove a lot of people wrong. Uh, we all know what he can do. It's just a matter of now just going out there, executing it, getting it done. So we're excited to have him back. And you and uh, Coach Eason, yeah. uh, recruiting wise, what, what do you think has worked with y'all? I know you brought in a number of big guys you can't right. specifically, but what dynamic is there between y'all two that's been so effective yeah. at the defensive line recruiting wise? Well, I think at the end of the day, just identifying what the need is and the guys that we want to fit the profile of what we're looking for. Um, kind of high character kids that, that love the game of football, love the grind. Um, that's what we're looking for. And, you know, at the end of the day, man, we're just trying to be ourselves. You know, not try to be anyone else. Just be who you are. And I think kids see that and they want to be a part of a, of a, a program like that. And so we, we, we constantly talk about, you know, who we want as a staff. And we go out and identify those guys and, and, and you know, try to get them here soon as possible. You, you can tell me where I'm wrong, but I kind of feel like you have four known entities yep. in those top four. Then you kind of have Kate, I mean, um, uh, Kevin and, and Greg, right. who've been around for a little while. Right. Where, where does Caden's Zaire kind of fit in all that, and yeah. how important is this fall camp for those two guys? Really, those four guys. Right. Well, you know, I said in the spring, man, that I wanted to definitely give, uh, you know, Greg and Kevin a lot of reps, right. all right, because I was... I'm losing four guys, so it's important that they get the game reps, get as much reps as they can possibly get. So uh, coming out of spring, I felt good about Greg and, and, and Kevin. Now, Zaire and Kate, they're developmental guys, uh, didn't get a lot of reps, played a lot of scout team last year. So, it's, man, it's super important that they get the reps um, this fall as much as we can. Obviously, I got to get get my guys ready to play, but they, ha I mean, so far, even this summer, they've done a good job in the weight room, uh, doing all those things that need to happen, but it's, it's, it's super important that they continue to progress at a high level, and uh, uh, they're doing that, so I'm anxious to see those guys uh, put the work in this fall. I'm sorry, I got here late, I think you were just talking about those two guys, but just to give... If you didn't have so much depth, how would you feel about sending Zaire and Kate out there right now? Kind of well That's a good question. Um, you know, I would, I would be concerned. You know, uh, because they don't have the they don't have the reps. Uh, so it's it's important that they continue to develop in the classroom, learning the uh, the system, learning what we're doing technique wise, fundamentally wise, and then you know getting out there and try to execute at a high level. And they know that, you know, and hopefully, um, you know, we got, a, we got a few weeks to go before we start up, you know, we're, we're now having segment meetings with our guys, uh, trying to, you know, get caught up. Now we're back into football mode, we're talking football techniques and things like that. So there's a learning curve that needs to happen. And um, I'm hopeful that you know, they're, they're, you know, from a, from a up top standpoint from, from learning and understanding what we do, hopefully they can get it. And then now it's just trying you gotta transfer it over on the football field. And uh, I, I have confidence they'll be able to do that. KJ, to me, seemed like he kind of mid-season yeah. took that next step, the one that, that everybody's kind of been waiting on. What was the impetus for that? What what caused it? Did, did you see it? Yeah. What caused it? And, and can he go even further this year? Uh, you know, I think, I think KJ just really he, um, he he got healthy, you 
know, he was he was banged up a little bit. He sure. had some knee injuries, and, and uh, I just think, man, he, we put him in positions where he felt like, man, I just got to play free. You know, I can't worry about things I can't control. I think early on, um, he was worried about, you know, who's starting, why I'm not starting, things like that. But the dude worked his butt off, man, and. He, you know, he went out there and, and he did everything that we thought he could do. Um, and I think at the end of the day, it was about confidence. And I think he, he uh, got confidence in himself to go out and play at a high level. And I'm, I'm proud of him. I know for sure that uh, he's going to have a great year. Um, you know, I, I think I think the leadership that KJ has always displayed, man, has been on full display in my group. You know, he's taken on that role and he's done a really, really good job. So I'm looking forward to KJ to really have an outstanding year. Speaking of KJ, what has it been like for him and uh, Xavier Thomas to be able to return for that, like, that one final year? And, yeah. and what has their leadership meant for this position going into this new season? Well, you know, at the end of the day, um, you know, I was talking to my wife the other day. You know, I've been with these guys, you know, this is six years. Right? And, you know, this is, man, it's, it's unbelievable how we've, um, we've all matured in that position, in that role. Uh, you know, I think I matured as a position coach. They matured as players. And this is our final ride uh, together. And uh, I'm excited. You know, obviously, when Xavier Thomas said he was coming back, man, that was a big deal. Okay, that's a big deal. And I'm glad. And uh, now we get a chance to hopefully go out and play at a high level, you know, be productive on the field. Um, Get, you know, live out the dreams that you know they want as players, and uh, I think they have that opportunity. You know, KJ is a, is a uh, you know, he's a leader. He's a vocal leader. Xavier Thomas uh, this season has you know, obviously this off season has been more of a, uh, a leader by example. You know, he's he's gotten his body in, in great shape. Uh, mentally, he's good. Uh, he's got physical. He's always been a physical player. He's got bigger, stronger. He's leaned out. Just changed his body type. So uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased with the effort so far in those guys. Coach Richardson mentioned earlier that nobody on the staff felt like last year was a down year. Yeah. First, like, can you kind of elaborate on that and maybe how that affects your feelings entering this year? I don't think it was a down year. We won 10 games, you know, and obviously we didn't get the goal. Uh, of going to the playoffs, but you know, to win 10 games, man, that's huge. And you know, I think at the end of the day, you got to have an appreciation for winning. We learned that. You know, Coach Sweeney talks about that. We talked about that as players at Alabama. Coach Stallings preached that. You got to have an appreciation for winning football games, and we won 10 games. Man. So it wasn't a down year, in my opinion. XT told us in the spring he, he got too fat. Yeah. He was really, you know open about it right. <clears throat> and it seems like it's just been a process with him getting the body right getting yeah. the mind right is this the best he's been since he's been here in both spaces and what what do you kind of expect out of him not numbers wise right. but just out of the, the, the man yeah well it, it is the best you know I said I said uh, last year XT that was the best version of X, Xavier Thomas right in every area right and you know um I, you know, Xavier, Xavier got he got baptized this off season. Uh, he's changed his life, man. He's changed his perspective on things. Um, just the way he's working, he changed his body. You know, he's just a different dude, and that's the that's what we want from him. And so now, he just got to have some great things happen early, and just, just continue that progression. And. Uh, I'm just looking forward to seeing him play, you know, and, 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 and being there to be the mentor, uh, to lead him, uh, to advise him when he needs my help. Uh, I've been around Xavier. We've, we've gone through a lot together, personally, and uh, I feel like, you know, I know everything about him, man, and, and I want just, I want him to have success. Like I want all my guys, uh, but Xavier Thomas, I want him to have some success been talking for a little over nine and a half minutes haven't mentioned a guy by the name of miles murphy yet. <laughs> yeah. that guy that guy <laughs> yeah. yeah hey man he's special he's special um 
what does he do? Like, he was good last year, yeah. really good. Right. But what does he do to then take that next step? Right. Well, you know, <clears throat> Miles should have had double digit sacks last year. Right. And very capable of doing that. Uh, I think now we just have to finish. You know, uh, he he's done a good job with his body. He's done a good job of getting in the best shape that he could possibly be in. Uh, he's already big, strong, fast, explosive. Now it's just about to finish. And uh, he's working on that with D-Love, our strength conditioning staff. Um, he's doing you know, prehab stuff, all the things that he needs to do uh, to be functionally ready to go out and execute at a high level. Now it's just when you get on the field, you just gotta, you gotta get the job done. And I believe Miles Murphy, I believe in Miles, I trust Miles, and he's gonna have an unbelievable season. When I look at his size, I see the explosiveness in his hands, yeah. that first step. I can't figure out who he reminds me of. He's, he's definitely Miles Murphy, but is there any anybody that you've played with against Coach that he kind of reminds you of him? You know, man, I, I try to be careful and not try, try to compare. You know, I think I think um, all I can tell you, man, is that you know, Miles Murphy is just freakish. Not many that, that you know that you can find like him. Um, I don't know. That's a good question. I don't know. Coach, how do you feel about your overall fit going into this year? I feel good about it. I feel good. Uh, you know, at the end of spring, you know, we left out with uh, felt with six guys. Um, obviously, you know, I would love to go into go into the fall with six guys that can go in and execute at a high level. Um, but I, I do. I feel good about my depth. Uh, I think guys can go in and play. You know, now it's just, you know, getting Zaire and Kay Denhoff, getting them ready. And um, that's kind of the thought process moving forward. Coach, what has been the uh, something that the, during the spring that this group has improved on the most? And what's your area of emphasis going into the summer? Well, my work this summer was, uh, even at the end of spring, was being consistent. All right, consistency, man. You know, we got to continue to get better, you know, and uh, not make a lot of mistakes. Uh, you know, no mental errors, no uh, missed tackles, missed sacks, missed opportunity, things like that. Um, my goal is, hey man, let's let's let's, uh, let's go in with the thought process of every day. Let's get better. All right, let's get focused in on the main thing, uh, and, and that's what I'm looking for. Consistency is the big thing. Back to Miles for a second. If you pay any attention to mock drafts this time of year, he's already a guy that you see in the first round of a lot yeah. of these. Is he someone that puts any stock in that, or is he just kind of laser focused on what he has to do on a day to day basis to get better? Yeah, I, I don't think Miles worry about that. He's not that type of player, that type of young man. His focus is what can he do to help this team and everything else to take care of itself. So Miles knows that he has an opportunity. All right, but you know, at the end of the day, you don't go out and play at a high level, you know, you may not get that. But I think he's focused in on getting his body in shape. He's focused in on how he can help our team and the expectation that we have from a D line. Uh, that's kind of been his focus. What do you think are to be some of the differences between Coach Goodwin and Coach Venables? <laughs> That's a loaded question. It's uh, <laughs> a lot of differences. Uh, you know, I think I think Wes is just going to be who he is. And, uh, you know, Wes is, I think, going into this this uh, spring, we as the staff decided to slow down the installs, uh, really to help our guys. Uh, you know, Coach V, you see, he is a energetic, fiery guy. You know. That's not West personality. Man. But at the end of the day, they both love the game of football. They love, they love you know, calling defenses, all those things. So I don't think, from that perspective, you won't see any changes. He's a younger guy in the grand scheme of coaching, you know. Yeah. So I mean, that speaks to a guy that has real talent that they've been able to progress so quickly. So someone that's on the outside, can you describe what exactly that looks like? What's allowed him to progress so quickly? Are you smart? Super smart. He's been around great coaches, great defensive minds. You know, he does a good job of just uh, just simplifying things, understanding football, understanding defenses. 
and I think that's helped with his progression. And, and, and kids, our players can relate to that. They relate to him. He's a, he's a, he's a great person, and uh, you know, we're excited to have Wes and to be a part of what we're trying to do defensively and having Wes and Mickey lead us. I'm excited for that. Speaking of that, so in the bowl game, everybody's got a new role. You're up in the box. Wes yeah. is down on the field. When the bowl game was over and yeah. the defense had played so well, what was the, the, the thought? Like, how did you guys grade yourselves? And did you go, wow, that, that was as good as could be expected? Or, Well, um, we were excited. First of all, happy to get the win. Uh, you know, we, we heard all the naysayers and, and all the stuff. You know, Clemson defense left. You know, Coach B left and all that. But, you know, we wanted to go out and prove that, you know, we could, we could our guys still can play at a high level. And uh, we were excited. We were excited about what our players were able to do and how we came together as a unit defensively and held everything together. And so uh, that, that's the confidence that we have. And we, we want to be great. We want to be great as coaches. We want to be great uh, defensively. Uh, Coach B has set the standard here at Clemson, the defense. And we want to continue with that standard defensively. What, what do you think about that when people say Venables is gone, this defense isn't going to be as good? Like, how, what do you personally feel when you, when you hear that? I, it don't bother me. Yeah. You know, I, you know, I played defense a long time. I've had many defensive coordinators. The standard is a standard. Uh, for a long time, Clemson defense has always been strong. And, uh, so I don't. It doesn't bother me, man. I think at the end of the day, we got a, we got a job to do. You know, and we're gonna do that. So, but the standard is the standard. Give us an idea how freakishly talented this defensive line is. Give an idea. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, they're across the board. We got about seven, eight guys. That you know, you think about Murphy, KJ, Mercy, TD, all of them. They're all we're, we're deep. We're three deep. Um, you know, Coach Sweeney have used it. He used the, uh, uh, the deal with you know trying to compare the 14 B line, um, and you know we're very close to that. You know, obviously we got to go out and play, but this is a this is a very talented group, and uh, but there's a high expectation in that. That's the expectation. The expectation has always been there, you know. And you know now our guys just got we got to go out and play. Don't read all the clippings. People tell you how great you are. I mean, just lock in and, and go out and execute, play at a high level, <coughs> be dominant, and, and let everything else take care of itself. But this is a very talented team. What step do you think Miles will take this year? What step? Uh, I think he, you know, he'll be a double-digit guy, sack-wise. I think you know, he's proven that he has all the ability to be able to do that. Now it's just a matter of going out and finish, like I said earlier. He's got to finish those, those opportunities, finish those sacks. But um, I expect Miles Murphy just to be dominant. You, you mentioned uh, Greg and Kevin sort of as your number, five, fifth and sixth defensive ends back yeah. in the spring. What, how much confidence do you have in those guys you have to put them on the field to play so that they've been snaps in your top four? Yeah, I, I'm very confident now coming out of spring practice. Uh, that they can go in and execute. You know, uh, as we start fall practice, we'll get more reps. They'll get more reps with the first team. And, you know, I feel good. I feel good, man. I I, I left. Uh, and I think about Greg. I think about, you know, both of those guys were former linebackers that moved to the end. And to be able to buy into what the defensive end position looks like, uh, it's, it's been really good. So. I have full confidence that he can go play. Going back to Wes for a minute, I've heard some stories about him and his, his brain. Is there a Wes story that game planning or during some time he's just kind of surprised you with, like, how did he know that or how yeah. did he remember that? Is there a Wes story that, that you like to tell? I wish I had one, man. All I know is if, if you know, Coach V would ask Wes about, hey, something happened in 2000. 14 or 15 or, or even 13. And Wes can, I'm telling you, he could find the clip right then uh, and pull it up. And, and Or he can just state exactly what happened. So I'm always uh, not surprised I've been around Wes a little bit, but 
at that moment sometime, it just shocked me that you know, I can barely remember last week. And this guy goes back, he can remember 2012, 13, it's unbelievable. Uh, but I don't, I don't have many West Stories. I really don't. You'll get some. Yeah, I will. I will how, get unique some. Is, how unique is that in the profession to have a guy who has almost instantaneous recall? It's like very that. unique. It's very unique, man. Um, it blows my mind because I'm like, how do you, how are you able to do that? But it's, uh, you know, you find guys like that. West is one. He's unbelievable, man. He, he is uh, super smart, like I said. Um, you know, we had a position, I had a position coach that Wes used to work for uh, in Ellis Johnson. And uh, so Wes and I have stories stories about Ellis uh, that we constantly talk about. But uh, Coach Johnson would talk about Wes as, as a super smart guy. Say, hey, whatever Wes says, you better believe in him. And so I'm always, I keep that in the back of my mind when I think about Wes. We, we've talked to, over the past about getting plays in faster. Yeah. Does that help Wes standing there on the sideline being able to say, okay, they've come out with two tights yeah. and, a, and a back offset, so I know what's coming yeah. and, and can get a play in quicker? Right. Well, I, I think it does. You know, there's a lot of information that happens, you know, trying to process what's the personnel, what's down the distance, who's in the game, you know, all those things. I think it does. I think it, it helps with for him, he could better probably answer that for you, but um, I think for him, just getting all that information and processing, uh, it helps him in that, in that, in that regard. And, and being up top, you know, Mickey and I, are, we're looking at things as well. Uh, I don't know if, it, you know, I'm talking to the D-line guy and Mickey's talking to Wes, and it's just a lot going on, I mean, a lot of communication. Uh, but those guys do a great job. Coach, you go way back.